Two Bird on a Wire by Free Craft on Loose. Read by Lily6645. This fic includes My Hero Academia level violence. That is your warning. Chapter 5 Spilt Secrets. It has been three days since Yamada Hazashi took Hitoshi in. Hitoshi tried his best to live his life free from any burden and guilt no one placed upon him. But Hitoshi can hardly sleep at night. The image of Zu and Kei being hurt because of him always haunts his nightmares. The thought of Izuku and Keigo sacrificing their lives so Hitoshi could live makes him want to cry and drown in his own tears, running through the back door in the hope of catching Uncle Zawa before he goes, Hitoshi comes barreling at him. Hitoshi. Uncle Zawa's voice was always gentle, albeit a little gruff. Hitoshi just hugged him tighter. Do you ha- did you have a nightmare? I can't take it anymore. I don't care if I become his slave. I don't care anymore. All I'll tell you everything. Hitoshi screams at Uncle Zawa back. Shirt. Sure. Uncle Zawa then gently pried Hitoshi's hands off of him before turning around. Okay. I'll get Zashi, and we go to the police station, okay? Hitoshi nodded to that. Shota managed to stay standing as Hitoshi comes barreling at him. Shota thought he was having a nightmare, but then he started ranting about being a slave, and Shota knew that Hitoshi wanted to do Shota didn't like the idea of Hitoshi being a slave to a man who was obviously a jerk at the best and rotten isn't even the worst. They can't find a thing about the suspect just by the clue Hitoshi has unintentionally given, just like their search for Emerald and Ruby the thought of them being an orphan comes across Shota. It's normal for a kid to be fully registered once they have manifested their quirk, but orphans don't have that luxury and have to wait until they get fostered or adopted to be registered, and sometimes until they are old enough to register themselves. They arrived at the police station and once again made a beeline to Sukachi's office. This time, however, Hitoshi is taking the lead, leaving Hazashi and Shota a few steps behind. Without any hesitation, Hitoshi opened the door and walked in, posturing himself right in front of Sukachi. Ah, Shinzo, what's brings you here? Tsukachi asked. Yamada has been taking good care of you, right? Tsukachi added with a raised eyebrow and a smirk. Hazashi squeaked and stomped his way in, standing right beside his son and wrapping an arm around his shoulder. Zashi is good. I want to tell you everything I know about the fighting ring. All the adults' eyes widen. Fighting ring? Hitoshi has escaped from a fighting ring? Emerald and Ruby helped him. In other words, they are also from the same fighting ring. That explains their fighting style and capabilities. Tsukachi nodded. Shota and Hisashi take their place on either side of Hitoshi and Hitoshi explains every little detail he knows. Everything Emerald and Ruby have told him, have warned him, including the warning smile. 
the twins gave him before they asked him to run and never look back. Shota's gut was twisting by the end of Hitoshi's story because th his feelings were true again. That later isn't just a simple goodbye. That letter is the last words written because they are sure they will be gone the very next day or even moments. Emerald and Ruby know the consequences of their actions, yet they still do it. Shota can't lose that potential. Shota can't lose them. Exchanging a nod with Sukachi, they move. Hizashi, bring Hitoshi back home. We will get them. Shota got a nod from Hazashi, and he ran out the room with Tsukachi, calling all the underground heroes who happened to be in the area. They begin their ride, raid. They come in just in time before a guy with rhino mutations can give a finishing blow to Ruby, who is already on the floor, broken Feathers scattered around the area. Shota makes a quick work apprehending the guy while the others take care of the audience. Shota comes closer to Ruby and checks on him. This is the closest they have ever been and Shota hates the circumstances that make it possible. He's still breathing and quite, quite stable and Shota can see the open wounds on Ruby's very slowly closing up. E eraser head? Ruby was barely conscious. I'm here, Ruby. We'll be f You'll be fine. Stay with me. Zoo. He is in the back. Ruby tilts his head towards one of the doors before passing out. Ruby, shit! Ruby, answer me. Eraser, sir. Go get Emerald and anyone else who might be in the back. And Midnight and Rocklock, go with the him. I'll take care of what's left here. Shota nodded before starting running. Tsukachi may be a detective, but he is ca a capable fighter. Years of sparring together with Shota helps him. Police officers also have to fight after all. Running through rows and rows of empty cells like rooms, Shota feels his blood run cold. There are some bites, bits and pieces of character in a few of the rooms, but the owner of the said character is nowhere to maintain it. There is only one room that looks alive. Shota is sure that it is Emerald and Ruby's. Shota kept on running, checking every room he can come across until he was at the very back of the hall. There was a cage and Emerald was inside of it. The lock can be Tim as Shota pulled it off and breaked it into pieces in the process. Shota is immediately at Emerald's side. He is bleeding. Shota suspects Emerald has a few broken bones too. He just hopes Emerald doesn't have any internal wounds. Picking up the boy as carefully as possible, Shota runs to the next door and got him to the waiting ambulance. Emerald reacts to nothing that Shota did to him, not even a whimper. Izuku woke slowly to two beeping noises and small the smell of antiseptic. Izuku tries to feel his surroundings, but he can't move his left hand and right leg. Izuku knows he broke those two, and probably a couple of ribs, too. Izuku never really take account of his injuries, after all. 
Izuku hears a faint conversation and tries to open his eyes, but to immediately close it again with a hiss. Zoo, you're okay? That is Keigo's voice, but it sounds muffled and distant. He has a concussion that is yet to be fully healed. That is no a normal reaction. Your reaction to light is even more worrying when you first woke up. Another familiar voice, and this one is gruff. Izuku decided to open his eyes again, and this time the light was dim enough to not hurt his eyes. Izuku looked around and sees Keigo, also a racer head, beside him. Hey kid, how do you feel? Eraserhead said softly. Tired, Izuku answered him honestly. He didn't feel like being cryptic right now. That's understandable, Eraserhead said with a nod.